Hey coach, one of the questions I get asked a lot, but I see online a ton is, hey, tryouts are coming up. What drill should I do? Or how should I uh, set things up? I've never done this before. I'm going to give you kind of a plan to put in place to help you out with this. I'm not going to tell you every drill to do, but I'm going to give you a lot of examples. And I think it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. If you, if you know what you're doing, but you have a lower level coach who doesn't, this is going to work perfect for him. First, we have our tryout format and plan. So our goal here is to make sure that we're competing in the conference and in the state tournament as a varsity coach. If it happens to be a lower level, the goal may be slightly different, but competition and competing day in and day out should be one of your main goals you want for your program. Uh, the process here goes over just the tryouts. Okay, and I won't read this whole thing to you. Our key points is going to be we want to focus on one or two objectives for everything we do. You can't focus on everything because every player doesn't make every right decision or every right move all the time. So we're going to focus on one or two things that's going to help us differentiate between the kids. All right, next is our breakdown. We want to have drills in this particular, this first part particularly, that are going to break down and we're going to look at certain skills. So things like, um, shooting or dribbling or passing, those types of things. These are going to measure the fundamental skills that we know our players need to have. And you can add more things like defense. You could put in rebounding and boxing out, things like that. So by no means is this exhaustive, but it will give you a nice framework. So first, drills need to be measurable. Make your players compete in at least one of four ways. So each drill you pick, make sure that they're competing against time, which is the first one, the number of attempts that you want them to, to make so or to take. So 23 pointers, then maybe they make 15 out of 20. They were competing because they had a, a limited number of attempts to make. The number of completion or makes, so make 10 free throws in a row. How long is that going to take? You have three minutes to do it. So we put in both, not only our time, but we also put in the number of makes we wanted. Um, but we're going to start to see who finishes last. And who's done first and although everybody's making 10 it's going to take players longer and it starts to differentiate them and then the next thing is performed against another player so the first person to finish or the fastest time something like that it's a competition now so it's not just perform the skill get it done but it's perform the skill against somebody else uh, and that's going to help differentiate between them so pick the three things that you want to focus on in practice for drills so one I love to do is two ball dribbling full court for a minute. The kids are going to start on the whistle. They're going to go up and down as many times as they can in one minute. If a kid starts to get five or six, their conditioning's pretty good. Their ball handling is, is pretty good. But every time they hit an end line, that counts as one. All right. And then I'm going to record those. I'm going to say, well, who got to five and a half and who got to two or whatever it is. We want to make sure every level is going to be a little bit different. Make sure that you're recording that to see who is first and who is who is last and everybody in between. Uh, but that's a dribbling one. If we wanted to do a passing one, maybe we would say count the number of passes in 30 seconds that you're going to make. Or how fast can you make, if it uh, happens to be a partner drill, you want to pass up and down the court for a minute and see what it is. Uh, or you need to get 20 passes before you move on to the next shooting thing. So you're gonna see who finishes first and then who's shooting first, and that's gonna differentiate. So pick the three you want, base it on the four things that I've given you up here, and that's all you're paying attention to. That's it, don't worry about anything else. They dribble off their foot, they're not gonna have as many reps as everybody else is. They're not gonna be able to get up and down the floor as fast as everybody else, so that kind of thing. And then we have our situations. Situations allow players to demonstrate their, their playmaking ability, um, their agility, their decision making, all of that stuff, the work ethic, who's going to dive on the floor, all those things that aren't easy to measure in drills. So this is going to be where we're competing much more against each other, but one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, -two, three-on-three. The examples I give here are three versus two into a two versus one. All right. Do players know when to get rid of the ball? We're looking at one specific thing. That one specific thing is getting rid of the ball. If you don't know when to do it, it's going to lead to turnovers or it's going to lead to the defense having an advantage and you're always taking an outside shot in a situation where the offense should be getting layups. If you would like to look at the defensive side of things, have your assistant coach pay attention to how many layups are we giving up. If Johnny's giving up a layup every time he's in, we know he doesn't understand how to play defense in a situation where, where the offense has an advantage. So 
you can look at different things, but only pick one thing per coach to look at. It's going to make your life a whole lot easier. Um, and then we have four versus four half court. No turnovers. You can only score on layups. So real easy. We're looking at no turnovers, only score. There are one to two things. Boom, we've got them. If we want to look at anything defensively, don't try to look at no turnovers, and then the defense has to get four stops in a row. You won't be able to pay attention to all that stuff effectively. Give the defensive stuff to somebody else. You take the offense or vice versa, and then focus on those one or two key areas on your offense and one or two key areas on your defense, and that's going to help you out. So you pick those things that you like the best in here, what you want to focus on, and that's what we're looking at. Next is athleticism. We want players who are athletic. A lot of times uh, you can tell this just when they're doing their drills and they're warming up and things, but you really want to know for certain. So there are different drills that you can perform. And here we have a three, three station testing. It's for a minute. We're going to count the number of layups and uh, the number of touches that we get. All right. So it might have been backboard touches that we were doing that particular day. So we went ahead and gave them something specific to do in three different stations, and then we looked at those numbers. But to go back up here, testing can be performed against other players, so who's done first, second, third, or it can go against the clock. How many did you get in a certain period of time? Testing can be done with or without the use of basketball equipment. So this is not necessarily stuff that has to have a basketball. It might be a you know 16 in a minute where you're going sideline to sideline. We want to get 16 in a minute. Well, you'll see who's got 14, who's got 15, who got six, who's got 16. And then it must be equitable for all athletes to perform to have accurate evaluation results. The biggest thing here is if you're going to say you have to have a a gut buster done or line drills done and everybody's got to be back in 30 seconds you may have a player who physically cannot do that even if they're in great shape for their size so making it equitable would be hey my guards have to do it in 30 seconds my wings have to do it in 32 my bigs have to do it in 35 or something like that or have them run one to get a baseline and say all right, you got a 36 on your own. You have to do it in 35. We're gonna, you got to push harder. Uh, but that makes it so every kid has a baseline score, and we're trying to do better the next time and improve. But all of these here are going to be inside the membership. Um, they're all under our conditioning. So if you're looking uh, for conditioning stuff and different practice drills, that's where you're going to find all of these. Uh, so I won't go over all of them, or you can come up on your own. But Pick things here that you can test that are going to require not just skill, but they're going to require skill, change of direction, jumping, number of touches, number of push-ups, all of that kind of stuff. But again, just pick one or two things and then, then move on. Don't make it so complicated you can't pay attention to everything. Next is our offensive understanding. We want to teach players a specific set or play or a concept and see if they can perform it. So this might be your offensive break. You go over it, you let them all perform it and see who can do it, who can't. Uh, it might be a pick and roll. We're going to teach a basic concept. And this is before we've added in anything. This is just real, real basic stuff. And then once players have learned the action or concept, add the defense and see their level of understanding. So we're going to run our offensive break from five on four, five on O oh to five on five and we're going to see how we do with that offensive break. Players who have the understanding, who know the game, are going to do better. Not perfect, but better than players who don't have any idea what's going on. So you're going to start to be able to see how they're thinking about the game and how they've learned the game up to this point. Defensive understanding, a lot of the same stuff, except we're just putting a defensive emphasis. So we've got four on four, shell, offense doesn't move. So the offense is passing it, the defense is rotating, however you want your defense to rotate, uh, but offense isn't really live. We're just seeing how they're, they're, they're thinking about things, how they're processing things. And then we jump down here and we're going to do four on four shell, and we're going to let the offense cut after each pass. And we might say, you can score on layups. So now there's a new element to it. So we're going to see how the kids respond to moving and with the ability to have the offense score but you can look at the other examples or add whatever you want there now bulldog offense because we're the bulldogs that's what's in there you can put in whatever offense that you would like um, and have them learn that <clears throat> and the last thing is competition we want to see how players are going to compete um, now we have them play three on three and five on five situations quite often uh, we'd even do four on four in there as well but let players know how they'll win so the first team to seven by twos and threes I love playing to seven by twos and threes because you have to play defense. 
you can't get lost. You can't give up a play. You can't not get back on defense if you have a ch if you want a chance to win, because uh, twos and threes the game can be over real fast if you're not playing any defense. Where a game to eleven or a game that you go to by ones and twos, players can start to take a playoff because they know we can come back. We can come back. A game to seven, you can't take a playoff. Otherwise, you're going to be hurting. Uh, in terms of trying to come back, it's much more difficult. And then any specific rules that you want, no dribbles, only layups, four passes, um, whatever it is, everybody's got to touch the ball. It's got to have a post entry before you can shoot it. We're only taking uh, three-point shots. It, it doesn't matter what rules they are, but give them specific rules to think the game and then allow them to go out there and to compete and see if they can put in the skills along with having the athleticism piece to it along with the competition piece put it all together in these games so i think that'll help you out in formatting what you want to do and then if you have two or three days of tryouts pick something new each day or just tweak it just a little bit to get them a little variation <clears throat> now the next thing that i want to show you here is going to be evaluation forms and we're going to go ahead and Move this over to the new tab. All right, so here's an evaluation form. So as you're evaluating the players on all this stuff, go ahead and have a sheet for each of them. Player's name, who the coach is, the level, the height. Have everything down here so that you can start to rate them a little bit. How did they do on their offensive moves and concepts? Uh, athleticism, whatever it was that you timed them in or you wanted them to do, make a note of it and rank it. The intangibles, did they listen? Are they a good sport? Uh, and then make a note. Any time that we meet with one of our players, if we're going to cut them or if it's a player that we want to have them work on something, this is going to be a sheet that we're going to give them. And really, I like to give it to all the players, but specifically the ones who I'm saying, hey, this is your role or hey, this is where, why you didn't make it. And these are some things I think you can work on. Uh, this is a great sheet. But every player has something to work on and should be able to to get a sheet like this you spend a few minutes with them talking about where they can improve and get better so this helps out a ton if you have a parent comes back and says why they get cut or a kid says i don't really understand why i didn't uh wasn't kept over so and so you don't have to talk about the other player you bring this out and you say this is how i evaluated you these are the things that i saw and these are the things that i want you to do better in next year or that you have to improve upon to get playing time in our program this is going to help a ton then you're not just making it up or trying to think of something on the spot you've got something to go to and hand them it and let them bring it home let them show it to mom or dad or whoever's asking the questions let me show you one more area as well and this is an overall sheet so this is going to be a sheet that i would keep in practice on a clipboard with me because i don't have time to write each individual player down that's really for the meetings so i'm taking a little extra time to write the individual player sheet down this sheet right here is something i do have time for so i can put the names the grades the heights all of that stuff that i'm going to transfer onto my individual sheets later but any drills that i had them do uh, so their skills the, and the drills are going to be here. I can rate them on three-point shooting. If we shot, you know, 100 threes that day, then I could see how many they made. Um, our, my shooting in general, what I think their shot looks like, a free throw shooting, layups, how they played on the perimeter. So this is offense and defensive concepts. Any time tests, this is the athleticism stuff, and then the effort, coachability, and sportsmanship, which you saw on the other page. So this gives you all of the information from the individual sheet you can take it, transfer it uh, when you meet with the players uh, to give them exactly what, they, what they're looking for or what uh, is going to help them improve their game. So coaches, each one of these things is inside the membership. Let me get back to that. All right, there we go. Coach, each one of these is going to be inside the membership. Um, under, in the coaching academy, under tryouts, you can find them in there. You can also find them, uh, I believe, under coaching notes and tools inside the library. But this is stuff that's going to make your life a whole lot easier as you move forward. It's going to help your program get better. And it makes the process of tryouts that much simpler because you've got a plan in place. All right. Hopefully this helps you out, Coach. I look forward to helping you have more success in less time. Thanks.